I had an opportunity to review some of the witness footage, some of the interviews that they were giving, right? And there was one particular witness that stood out to me, something that he said at the very end of his statement, okay? Now, I'm going to show you that clip right now, and then I'm going to show you another clip of another witness who also saw something very interesting the day that Liam died. This specific witness says that he saw Liam in the lobby, that he was causing a commotion that Liam was. But there was something that this witness said that really made me think that, that there was something more to Roger Norris just leaving his friend, right? That there was an actual argument between Roger Norris and Liam. Let me play this. I first thought one of my um, friends it was in the room right across the hall from him and heard very loud screaming, um, a lot of just almost primal noises, grunting, screaming, coming from the hotel room. Heard an argument with his friend earlier in the day, um, but during the immediate fall, I didn't hear any noises. Heard an argument with his friend. That's what this witness said, that there was another person across from him who heard an argument with his friend. His friend. The only friend that was there was Roger Norris. Let me play that back a little bit, okay? Because a lot of this information, when it was coming out, it was kind of thrown at us. And so we might have missed something. That was my thought. I said, there has to be more. Um, there's got to be more witnesses. Now, this specific witness also said that at one point, Liam Payne was convulsing in the lobby. What happened in the lobby? That's a great question that I have. Could Rogelio Norris also have been drugged with Liam Payne, potentially, and then you just left him there? Not really sure. Could he have gotten into a physical fight with Liam Payne? Yeah. I mean, I just find it so hard to believe it. You have this busted TV and all this is in disarray, and then you have this hotel staff that's continuously putting him in his room to stay there, and then they wait a while to call 911. Like, they didn't even call 911 right away. It took them a minute to call 911. You know, in this hotel specifically, it's been said in Argentinian articles that Rogelio Norris designated for Liam Payne to stay in this hotel. Like, almost like he knew the staff there. Almost like he had stayed there before. I mean, I don't know about you guys, and not that I want to, you know, intrude, but, you know, if I'm staying in a different country, um, I would feel safer staying at a friend's house than in a hotel where anything could happen to me especially if I'm a celebrity, right? Isn't that weird that he stayed at a hotel designated by Rogelio Norris? I mean, he had stayed in a couple, a couple of hotels. And it wasn't like Kay Cassidy was around, right? Like Kay Cassidy had already left. But listen again to what this witness had to say. There were, the person across the room heard a scuffle, an argument, a noise. First thought, one of my, um, Friends, it was in the room right across the hall from him and heard very loud screaming, um, a lot of just almost primal noises, grunting, screaming, coming from the hotel room, heard an argument with his friend. So he was making all these noise and then heard an argument with his friend. Could he have been physically fighting with Rogelio Norris or somebody else? It's a lot of questions that I have. Earlier in the day, um, but during the immediate fall, I didn't hear any noises. I had shown this clip of another witness who also said that they had heard, you know, uh, arguing, who th they had heard some things going on in the room. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about. In pain suite. Probably between three and four, I heard the door slamming a lot and it got really bad. Like come, there must've been people coming and going or whatever. And then lastly, um, a really, really loud, yell uh, probably somewhere between 4.45 and 5 o'clock. A really loud yell. Everywhere we're hearing noise. Now this witness says somewhere between 3 and 4, he heard something was going on. Let me let me play it from the beginning. In pain sweet. Probably between 3 and 4, I heard the door slamming a lot. And it got really bad. Like come, There must have been people coming and going or whatever. And then lastly, um, a really, really loud yell, uh, probably somewhere between 4.45 and 5 o'clock. 
So what happened here? What this was all Liam by himself? Was somebody there with him? What happened? That's what we'd like to know, right? But the time frame is a little off here too with this witness because there was a fan who spoke out and she said and she actually gave a public interview in a Argentina network. And she basically said that she saw Liam Payne around three o'clock and that he was signing autographs and that everything was fine. This is from TV Notas. And it basically says that there was the, the last fan who saw Liam Payne alive revealed information that contradicts versions of what the hotel was saying. Diana Gauna was with Liam Payne approximately an hour before his death. So you have all these different time frames. You have all these different things, right, that are happening. And Diana gave an exclusive interview to the Argentinian networks, right? And Diana said, you know, he wasn't drugged. He wasn't demonstrating that he was drugged or that he had drunk too much or anything like that. He wasn't aggressive. He was fine. She, would, she was saying that Liam Payne was in good humor around 3.30 that it was everything was fine um that there was nothing wrong with Liam Payne so how do how does the time frame go because here you have a witness who says around three and four shit started getting real in the room and then you have other witnesses that say well listen that th there was going on and there was screaming and yelling and he had an argument with a friend the time frames don't make sense you guys listen all we can do is continue to point out the inconsistencies of what the different people are saying, right? Point them out and talk about them and dissect them, truly. And that's what it's looking like here. It's looking like a bunch of inconsistencies. I definitely think that the hotel is trying to cover their asses. Like if Liam Payne was out there being destructive in the lobby, as other witnesses have said, why did you guys wait so long to call the, you know, 911? If if there was an argument between friends and, you know, Rogelio was there and all this other stuff, like, why would people wait this long to call 911 and then this is the end result of what happened? Or was there a setup? And that is a piece that I think a lot of us are trying to understand because you have all these different statements that contradict everything that's being put out there. Fans witnesses, people that were across the room from him. What we do know is that Liam Payne didn't do this to himself. TMZ reported yesterday that Liam's dad said that this Rolex watch was of sentimental value, that there is CCTV footage, footage out there where we actually see Liam Payne wearing this watch. And then when this fall happened, if that's what everybody believes, that he wasn't wearing the watch anymore. Did it go missing while hotel staff were in the room? Anacion is quoted saying he had the watch on one of his hands and that he had it at least two or three hours before his fatal fall, which would mean that all of these witnesses that have been saying things would have probably seen the watch, maybe not thought about it, but it was on him. So my question to you guys is, do you think this watch holds the key to the person that saw something, that did something, or, or was it just stolen? Was Liam Payne robbed? And we're going to continue to talk about all these inconsistencies. Do me a favor, guys. Please hit the like button and share, subscribe, do all those good things as we continue to find more information and we put these pieces together. I'll see you guys on the next one. Rabbits out. Bye, guys.